So I am hoping that in the next 30 minutes, I will convince you that the most important view um, to get in the first trimester is this mid-sagittal plane of the fetus. Uh, I have no disclosures. What I am hoping to cover is we'll talk about the optimal mid-sagittal plane. We'll talk about the various hidden markers you've heard all through the past two and a half days about so many markers. I'm trying to collate them all together. We'll touch on the volumetric potential and end with a summary. So for the optimal mid-sagittal plane, in our detailed diagnostic um, uh, parameter put out by the AIUM, it is recommended that we do get this mid-sagittal plane of the fetus. This is where we are going to be measuring the fetal CRL. And what is so important about this plane is this is a standardized plane across the globe. In Europe, as well as here, we all undergo certification. So we adhere to very strict criteria. It is just that we need to delve more into all the markers that are there. So to get to this mid-sagittal plane, as we've heard before, you need a high-frequency probe, get your sagittal section, narrow your sector width, and adjust your depth. Adjust the focal point, adjust the dynamic range, use cine loop, and be very mindful because a lot of times when we're looking at NTs and mid-sagittal images acquired in our unit, you see this image where the sonographers say this looks mid-sagittal, but really you should never have a connection between between your maxilla and the nasal bone. That's the frontal process, you're a little parasagittal. So you have to slide your pro parasagittally a little bit till that disappears completely. And here's the perfect mid-sagittal plane where you can see the frontal bone, the skin, um, the tip of the nose. And then this is where we measure our NT. And as we've seen over the past two days, this is where you see your nasal bone, where you see um, your maxilla, where you see the mandible, the thalamus, and the sphenoid bone. Uh, bone. Um, Dr. Sinkovskaya very elegantly described the difference transabdominally and transvaginally in the appearance of the brain stem because of shadowing from the sphenoid bone. So be very mindful to that as well. Um, the midbrain, uh, the brainstem and medulla oblongata, our future fourth ventricle with the choroid plexus within it, the cisterna magna and our occipital bone.